Hi everyone, it's Blake again with Northwinds Wilderness School. Welcome to our beautiful day. As you can see, I'm all bundled up and kind of covered in snow. It's about zero degrees out and it's snowing pretty hard, but you know what? I wanted to make a video today, so I'm gonna do it. Um, you've seen us talk a lot about identifying different plants, about eating them, about using them for medicine, and about some of the things you can do with them. And moving forward, you'll see a lot more of that. Spring and summer is the time for foraging, for harvesting plants, and for really cultivating a relationship with these plants. Foraging is one of my favorite things to teach. It's one of my favorite things to do. I love eating wild foods. However, for the last five years or so, I've sort of been on a mission to learn how to identify plants in the winter in their dormant season. A lot of these plants have a lot of uses in the winter, and plus, if you can identify them in the winter, you'll know where they are in the spring and summer. So I think we're gonna do this video in two parts, maybe three. Today, we're just gonna talk about a couple of different plants that you can identify in winter that still have uses. Next time, we'll talk about how to identify trees by their bark and by their branch configuration, which is tougher than a lot of people think. And then maybe we'll do a plant video part two. I'll see how this one goes. Um, the first plant is just this that I'm standing next to right here. You see how it's kind of yellow and segmented. It's got some little black spots on it. And if you'll look right over here, you'll see another one. Do you recognize this seed pod? I'll pretend you don't. This is milkweed. This is that thing in the summer that the uh, monarch butterfly caterpillars eat. This plant is edible spring, early summer, and late summer. It's got several edible parts, plus it's the home to the monarch butterfly. But in the winter, if you know where to find this, it makes great cordage. Um, cordage is string. String and rope made from plants and trees. Um, milkweed makes a nice water resistant cordage and you can harvest this almost throughout the winter. If you'll notice down here, it's starting to turn black, which is a sign that it could be rotting, but it's not soft and mushy. So this plant is probably still good for making cordage. Milkweed is a great cordage plant. It's super easy to process. It's plentiful. It's easy to harvest. Uh, let's go see if we can find another plant. Hey, look, I found another one. Some of you may recognize these beautiful seed pods as belonging to the evening primrose. This is another plant we talk a lot about in the summer because the entire plant from the bottom of the root to the top of the plant is edible. You can eat the seeds, the leaves, the shoot, the root. Right now, the main usable parts of this plant are the seeds, which are inside here. You see the, all these little seeds? These are edible all winter. You can either cook them as like a cereal or a meal, or you can grind them into a flour, but you can eat them all winter. As long as there's seeds there, there's edible. You can also eat the root of this. I'm gonna tell you, a lot of people will tell you that root plants are uh, food for the winter, but I challenge you to dig up a root in the winter in northern Wisconsin or Minnesota. Right now, I think we can still dig this thing up. The ground's only partially frozen, but another couple of weeks, the ground's gonna be frozen solid and you would not be able to dig this up. But the seeds are there all winter. Look, here's another one. You may remember this one from earlier this summer. I said it's my favorite wild edible. It's still my favorite wild edible. Unfortunately, you can't really eat it in this state. This is the stinging nettle. Look, you can see the kind of rounded square four-lobed stalk. You can still see the opposite paired leaves. You can even see some of the seeds left behind. Even in the winter, this plant is fantastic for cordage. It makes water resistant, UV resistant cordage, and it's good to harvest and process until the stalk rots. This is the stinging nettle, Urtica dioica. Here's another one right here. You can still see some of the seeds on the top. It fades to this kind of orangish yellow color and it'll get some darker spots in it. 
Summer, spring, winter, fall, this is one of my favorite plants and you can get cordage from it all year round. Wow, how did we get over here so fast? Look at this, I found some wild roses. I believe these are smooth rose. You can tell by the lack of thorns. Um, there are many varieties of wild rose in the upper Midwest. The, the exact species doesn't really matter. What we're looking for here is this guy. This is the rose hip. You can crush this and make a delicious tea that's really high in potassium and vitamin C. It's delicious. It tastes kind of the way a rose smells and they're really good for you. They can help fight off scurvy. And these are good right up through the winter. You'll see some of them start to get shriveled and kind of ugly like this. Those are still perfectly fine for use. Another thing that's awesome about the wild rose or Rosa SPP is that these, these uh, stems make amazing arrow shafts. They come fairly straight. They're easy to straighten. They're strong. You'll get several shots out of them. And um, traditionally in many cultures, they use these for arrows. So again, this is the wild rose. We're looking for rose hips. You don't want to eat these. They can irritate your throat, but they make a fantastic tea. All right, check this one out. <clears throat> during the spring, this is a beautiful flower and during the summer, it has natural insect repellent qualities. You see these fluffy little flower tops on here and you see these big kind of dead leaves and how everything terminates right here. Your flower stalks come up, your leaves come out all at the same point. This is the wild geranium. This plant has one very amazing use during the winter, if you can dig that root up. If you remember what I was saying a minute ago, sometimes once that ground gets all the way frozen, it's hard to dig these up. But right in this sort of transitional phase into winter, you might still be able to get the root out. If you make a decoction of this root, a decoction is a strong tea that's boiled and reduced down to about half. It's a treatment for chapped lips and cold sores, which are prevalent this time of year, with these cold, dry air and the wind blowing on your face, your lips will start to get dry and cracked and cold sores start showing up and your mouth will just hurt. You can make a decoction of the root of this thing and you can rinse your mouth, you can wipe your, or wash your lips with it, and it helps cure all those mouth uh, infections and injuries. So wild geranium, Leaves in the flower stalks all come from the same point. You've got the big dead leaves and these fluffy seed pods up top. Hey, how's it going again? I changed clothes. Uh, I thought of two more plants I want to talk about before I let you go. This one right here is goldenrod. Um, it's in the Solidago family. I believe this one is Solidago canadensis, but there's a bunch of varieties. The exact species doesn't really matter. In the summer, you can eat these leaves or the flowers. They don't taste great, but they do make a really good tea. <clears throat> in the blooming season, this plant is a fantastic antihistamine. In fact, if you take this and you mix it with stinging nettle, that's what I use to treat my seasonal allergies. <clears throat> in the winter, you can still eat these leaves, but they're a little dry. It's a little weird to eat them, but they're edible. Most importantly though, this stock, if you can find a nice straight fat one, this one right here is good. This one might even work. <clears throat> These make great hand drill spindles for starting fires. Um, you can use this with kind of a soft hearth board like maybe willow or maybe a slightly rotten white pine and spin up a fire in just a couple of minutes. Um, if you'll reflect back a few videos back, you'll see that I started showing you how to make a hand drill. Maybe one of these days I'll even finish. But you see how it's got these opposite leaves that when the plant is growing, they look whorled. And then it kind of spreads out and you've got what used to be these big, beautiful yellow flowers are now faded down to these. But this is the goldenrod, Solidago family, most likely Solidago canadensis. Great for hand drill fire. Let's go see what else we can find. All right, I found one more I want to talk to you about before I let you go. This here is what we call the staghorn sumac. This is a really cool tree. They grow really fast. They're all over the place. You've probably seen them alongside of highways or maybe in the summer, you've made lemonade out of these things. 
It's a delicious summer drink. It happens maybe in uh, late July or August, and it's the it's the origins of pink lemonade. It's very citrusy, a little bit sour, really good, super simple to make. You can also take these berries. They look a bit like this. Oh, sorry, I dropped it. They look a bit like this. And you can dry them and grind them up into a spice or a seasoning. Um, I hear it's really big in Moroccan food and it goes really well on steak. Um, I like to take these things and grind them up and put them on red meat before I cook it. It adds kind of a sour citrusy flavor. It's super delicious. And these berries, as long as they're red, and taste, mm, mm hmm, a little bit citrusy. They're good to go. Hmm, that's a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. Even now in November at 20 degrees, these things will make a great seasoning. I think they're about, they're probably past uh, the lemonade stage, but you can dry them, grind them into a powder, and use it to season um, your meat. Absolutely delicious, and just another plant that you can identify and use in the winter. So thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I, I, I hope that you found some value in it. This idea of identifying plants in the winter and trying to figure out what uses you can have in what we would normally call the off season is something that's pretty important to me. So I, I really hope you like it too. Um, if you did find value in this video, please let me know um, what you liked about it or what you would have liked to have seen that wasn't in it. Um, if you know anyone that you think might dig the video, share it with them. I would appreciate that. As always, thank you so much for your time. We know that it's valuable and you don't have enough of it. Thank you for your support. And um, we will make uh, part two of this that identifies trees. And we'll make a part three that has different um, plants in it. If there are any particular plants you'd like to see, please let us know and I'll make sure to include them. Thank you very much.